piloting that body as if it were your own. <laughs> Holy shit. Why is 2032 a dreadful year for us humans? To know that, you have to watch The Peripheral, this bold adaptation of a William Gibson novel of the same name. Starring Chloe Grace Moretz is incredibly fulfilling, even if you don't understand what's going on. William Gibson wrote, The streets find its uses for things in his 1982 short story Burning Chrome, which is considered one of the canonical works of the cyberpunk subgenre of sci fi. In the same narrative, Gibson creates the word cyberspace. The sentence succinctly captures the manner in which technology is misused and put to use beyond the original intent of its creators. Given that the peripheral is an adaptation of his 2014 novel, it also sounds prophetic at this point. The definition of the street is expanded in the peripheral. The series takes place in two distant periods and continents, a rural Appalachian town in the near future of 2032 and an oddly peaceful, sparsely populated London of 2099. These settings are very different from the busy, cluttered near-future settings featured in Gibson books such as Neuromancer. However, the series is situated firmly in Gibson's terrain, from an economy that makes it possible to earn a good living by assisting players in progressing through stages in immense virtual VR games, all the way to the idea of remotely controlled androids that closely resemble human bodies in every way. The peripherals of the title, technology is advancing, but it never seems to move humanity away from its baser inclinations or toward utopia. Sometimes they even invite tragedy on occasion. The new Amazon series, The Peripheral, is full of sci-fi marvels, a VR headgear that projects the awareness of a human being across time, a drugstore that files a prescription for a miraculous cancer treatment that was sent in 2099. Vehicles with the same level of self-cloaking as Wonder Woman's invisible jet. What exactly does the series discuss? Everything in the peripheral looks to be there. But for a captivating plot that draws you in, time travel, avatars, and simulations, faceless robots, covert missions, and a reference to the end of the world are all included in the plot. But there are also two invisible cars, a modern-day boss hog, and American soldiers defending themselves in remote shootouts. Although this science fiction plot has the resources to back up its inventiveness, it consistently manages to make these elements work against one another in order to tell an intriguing story. It takes a lot of work to describe the peripheral. The show imagines a 2090 society in which people may be controlled by someone wearing a headset. Here it's Flynn, played by Chloe Grace Moritz, who is back in North Carolina in the 2030s, who receives the headset from her brother Burton, played by Jack Renner thanks to an enigmatic Colombian business that wants him to give it a try. Flynn rides a bike that glides across the peaceful Blue Ridge Mountain roads in silence and works in a store that 3D produces whatever is needed. These are the most fascinating aspects of her, which are more so than other made-up characters lost in the nonsense of the plot. Flynn, played by Chloe, dons the headset and steps inside a simulation that resembles a video game tutorial, where she appears as Burton. Does she go on tour of the future with the headset? Well, a voice in her thoughts directs her and shows her how to use phrases like I have arrived to unlock doors, all while London appears bleak and noir-ready. Flynn finds herself on a quest that involves being kidnapped, seduced, and discovering that she can peel off her skin to reveal a robot hand, all while her car is being guided like a game by arrows that are gently flashing on the road. However, this sensation is distinct from Flynn merely donning a headset for her VR game. The agony is genuine, akin to receiving a kick to the abdomen while connected to the Matrix in The Matrix. Despite the fact that the peripheral was created by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, the minds behind the groundbreaking Westworld rather than just being an adaptation of a William Gibson book. Does the tale and setup captivate the reader and does the writing do credit to the universe created within the novel? The sci-fi noir future adaptation of The Peripheral, adapted by Scott B. Smith, lacks focus and purpose despite the allure of playing avatars. Rather, it becomes entangled, with an additional plot to have Flynn and Flynn killed back in the 2030s. For this reason, Burton must enlist his drinking and war companions, such as Ellie Gorey's character Connor, who lost both of his legs and an arm but still rides a mean unicycle and gives icy glares when not under the influence of alcohol. Lewis Hurtham plays Corbel Pickett, a local drug lord and businessman. 
Who gets involved when some armed men with automatic guns and invisible SUVs just don't cut it? The peripheral alternates between two worlds. The present, when folks in North Carolina drink beer as the day is obscured by a dull yellow haze, and the future, where people in gloomy London dress as flashy as possible and use words like atavistic with casual abandon. Despite the care taken with them by the customers and production designers, neither planet feels like anything more than a shallow appeal to fans of intense sci-fi films like Reacher, The Terminal List, and the like. The show's gumming North Carolina and British accents, which give no life to its mountains of self-conscious exposition, trying to make sense of what's really happening, are maybe the worst of all. Numerous reviewers claim that the show is flawed in every way, and that there are moments when it seems like nothing is happening. Does the viewer of the series get the impression that there is a lot of unnecessary information? Everything is so disorganized, and the writing is so tedious that it becomes even more difficult to follow. Even worse, despite the emphasis on a brother and sister connection, forged by their mutual love and care for their mother, who is suffering from a tumor, the emotional stakes are lost in the chaos. However, the show doesn't fully reveal what's going on or what to fear until episode 4, when it does so with a dazzling museum presentation that details the horrific events that occurred before these bleak 2090s. Although Flynn's first assignment, which led to the disappearance of Alita West, played by Charlotte Riley, a significant character from this future, and a backstory involving Flynn's instructor, Wolf Netherton, played by Gary Carr, are frequently mentioned. They do not provide any interest that a mystery box like the peripheral requires. Not much better are the less dialogue-driven sections. While the peripheral occasionally brings action into the narrative, it's always boring. Watching a group of men trade gunfire in the middle of the night, complete with call and response editing, is as boring as watching a group of hackers engage in combat across multiple timelines, all while frantically working on keyboards to the soundtrack of a typical thriller. It's 2032 when the peripheral takes place. The series' themes on how people interact with tech breakthroughs are especially relevant since it shows how society is only 10 years distant. Does the series serve as a reminder of our uncertain times in the future? Well, Miller's character on the show was forced to agree with the viewpoint, where she describes herself as a troglodyte who kind of lives in my little bubble. I believe I've only ever worn a VR set once, which is a lot of fun and a terrific way to advance civilization. However, the peripheral's genius lies in the fact that many sci-fi programs are set in distant universes with no connection to our own. This is something that could occur in an instant. Not even 70 years from now this will occur. It is around 10 years from now. Consider how far technology has already advanced and changed. If we don't pay attention, this is the reality we shall live in. If you watched any Westworld episodes, you probably know what it's like to watch a handful that are so dense with detail that you tend to overlook them until you think back on them or watch them again. This is not a show you want to watch while aimlessly scrolling through your phone. In fact, this might be a touch comical. Instead, expect a similar narrative in the peripheral, so pay attention. It's indicative of the show's desire to be more thrilling with the scenes, but it also shows how little else there is to give in a way of simple thrills. Do you believe that there will be a second season of The Peripheral, despite the lackluster reception the show has received? Do share your thoughts on this in the comments section. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Goodbye.